Hello Social Media. I'm Annie Logical. I'm an anti 5G campaigner like many others who has come under attack from people. Um, I never share anything that can't be verified. Everything that I claim can be checked. So here's some verifiable facts, okay? Different spectrum bands are required to enable 5G applications, right? We agree on that. So before 5G could um, be tested in the UK and 48 other countries, it had to be decided by the European Parliament and others, such as the European Spectrum Regulators, uh, the CEPT and Ofcom. Uh, I'll leave the links to everything just to show you what I'm talking about. So, on the 4th and the 5th of December um, 2017, the Transport and Telecommunications and the Energy Council, under the um, uh, Estonian Presidency, signed a 5G roadmap, uh, setting out precise deadlines for the um, harmonisation of the spectrum which was necessary for the 5G rollout. Then on the 1st of March, an agreement for the spectrum of 5G was reached between the European Parliament and the um, Council negotiation teams. Okay, so 4th, 5th of December 2017, deadline set, 1st of March 2018, they reached an agreement, right? They decided to use three bands which were 700 megahertz 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz and 24.25 to 27.7 gigahertz which is classed as a 26 gigahertz uh, spectrum right that is verifiable you can go and check that for yourself okay so how is it possible therefore for mark Steele to be in gateshead council chambers on the 24th of November in 2017, claiming that Gateshead lampposts were 5G. This is four months before any agreement on which bands would be used. So can you just let that information just sink in for a minute? Okay. This is not something that I've made up. These are facts, verifiable facts. So do you agree, therefore, that it's not possible for gateshead lampposts to be already 5G because not only was there no spectrum decided upon at that point but the actual auctions which were going to sell off the spectrum hadn't even started. Now the, the auctions started in April of 2018. So how is it possible that gateshead are using 5G before anywhere else in the world, any towns, cities, countries, have even decided which spectrum they're going to use. So why didn't the council at the 24th of November 2017 meeting with Steele, why didn't they just turn around to him and say, look, the spectrum hasn't even been decided upon yet, and it's not as if they didn't actually know him. They collaborated with his company, Review, in discussions on how to get funding for the Smart Specialisation Programme. They're also both involved with Civitas, Urban Mobility, Horizon 2020 and other organisations that are pushing the Smart Agenda. There's an article dated September 2018 and it's entitled 5G Technology for the Northeast Region. So the Gateshead Council are one of the Northeast Combined Authorities, okay, where they're complaining that they've been rejected for funding for the test beds and trials and the award had gone to the West Midlands. So let's just put this into perspective. During the time when Steele claimed that Gateshead had 5G, there was no spectrum yet agreed upon nor had the spectrum been sold off um, and clearly Gateshead had missed out on funding for test beds and trials and yet he's claiming in interviews that the same lampposts are targeting the Jewish community. It's a target acquiring weapon system so they've got a bit of an issue with it because obviously I know what it is 
and I try to cover it up. Now, I'm pretty sure that the Orthodox Jew population in Gateshead, they are potentially the main targets. And the reason for this test bed uh, test in, in the Gateshead area. Now, why would he have his smart technology on sale on the Israeli Homeland Security website? whilst he's claiming that the Jewish people in Gateshead are being targeted. I've shown on my website and Illogical Uncensored how far reaching the link to Gateshead Council and Steel. Okay? How far reaching the link is. That includes the court cases and who is involved. Now, I've shown that the judge is part of the same uh, chambers that work with the council and they've done advocacy advocacy training before. Um, I've also shown that the listings were never made public, going back to several cases, of course, which he constantly denied up until just re recently when he's come out with this. Obviously, tried to discredit me, done all sorts of ridiculous things, removed court listings, uh, on a number of occasions uh, to make sure that the mainstream media didn't get there. Obviously, people have to be mindful. They don't want the evidence that I've got in the court. Well, the problem is with that is that many people have looked for them listings when, at the time when they occurred and none were found. Many people questioned him about it and they were called names. But he decides like a year later to claim that, oh, he's been, the, the listings have been pulled because of those he's fighting against, really. I've also shown evidence that the documents that he has filled himself um, with, claiming they were court documents, didn't even have an official stamp on them, which means that they weren't processed, okay? Now, in one video, he slips up and thanks a counsellor, who is also a solicitor, for being decent enough to get him into the court. Now, how can anyone explain that? Wallace, McMaster, McElroy, McHugh, Peter Moore, the only one who's have had any decency to get me into this court, Gary Healy. Wallace, McMaster, McElroy, McHugh, Peter Moore, the only one who's have had any decency to get me into this court, Gary Healy. Now, I'm sure, you know, those of you who have been bullying me and calling me names, I've got some critical thinking skills left, okay? Ask yourself, why is he thanking a local Gateshead councillor, who's also a solicitor, thanking him for having the decency to get him into court when he's supposedly fighting them? Now... You know, I'm not going to stop telling the truth just because people gang up on me. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to make another video because he's made a video about a so-called LED light claiming that it's 5G when it clearly is not. And I think it might help us campaigners if people actually realise the difference between an LED lamppost and a 5G lamppost. This is a 5G lamppost and this is an LED lamppost. Okay, thank you for listening. Any logical, stay safe.